This is a CCEA GCSE Further Mass Statistics paper, and this one's from June 22. So let's get stuck in and see what question one is. Uh, the table below shows a number of pupils in a class who are right handed and left handed. One boy and one girl are selected at random. Calculate the probability that both pupils are left handed. So if it's one boy, that's three people out of 11. And girls, then a seven out of 12. And that gives, well, you can get a bit cancelled there if you want beforehand. So it'll be a one and four. So it'll be seven then out of 44. It's a nice straightforward one to start with. Uh, question two. Um, 10 students had part-time jobs during the summer. Jack recorded the number of hours they worked each week and the corresponding amounts they were paid each week. The results are shown in the table below. Um, so we have this. Uh, write down in the table above the rank orders for the hours worked and the amount paid. So for the hours worked, the rank, let me see. So the highest one here then is going to be F. So it would be 1. Uh, the next one then is A. Uh, I think then that's not going to be number three. Uh, D, I think, is number four. And H is number five. V is number six. G is number seven. C is number eight. I is number nine. And E is number 10. Uh, for the amounts paid, then 460 I think is the highest, so it's going to be number 1. Um, 430 is number 2. 360 is number 3. 350 is number 4. Um, number 5 here, number six, number seven, uh, number eight and nine. Now you notice they're the same, so eight and nine we kind of split, and so we go then 8.5 and 8.5, so that's eight and nine, and then my 10 would be going there. Uh, then it says calculate Spearman's coefficient of rank correlation. Um, so we need to work out the difference then in each of these. So we're going to take them away and then we're going to square them. So taking them away, we get 1, 0, minus 2, 1, 1 1.5, minus 1, 0, 1, not 0.5, and minus 2. So that's the difference. And then the difference squared, uh, 1.5 squared is 2.25. Uh, 1, 0, 1, not 0.25, and then 4. And to work out the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, remember you have the formula there, so just inside front cover 1 minus 6 sigma d squared all over n upon n squared minus 1. So filling in what we have 1 minus 6. So we need to add up all these d squares here. And if we add all those up, we get then 14.5. And the n is 10 because there's n different um, things, sorry, 10 different things. So it's 10. And then 10 squared 100 take away 1 is going to be 99. Uh, and we work that in. And we get then 0 0.91, which is a very strong. And positive correlation. Presumably, that's what's in. Um, interpret your answers to part two. So, I would write a strong positive correlation. Uh, calculate the mean hours worked and the mean amount paid. So, the hours worked, we need to add them all up. So again, I'm going to let you guys do this, but you just work that out in your calculator. So add all those up, and you can take my word for you get 260. 260, there are of course 10, 
and so that then gives us 26 and then the pay again we add all these up if you add all those up it comes to a nice round 3,000 actually 3,000 you divide by 10 again and you get 300 so the mean hours worked is 26 and the mean amount pay then is 300 Um, the data from the table a second. the data from the table are plotted in the graph below so you can see the positive correlation here draw your line of best fit on the graph and so we know the line of best fit, fit needs to go through the mean and the mean is of course in 26 300 so let's put that point on there's 26 there and we have 300, so we know our line of best fit then goes through the mean. And we're going to try our best then to draw a nice line as we work our way through from here. So let's see what we're going to have. Um, we need to make sure we go through that. We've got to kind of split them as best we can and see if I can find something decent here to kind of go up against. So I think we're going to go with something along those lines. That's my line of best fit there. Um, determine the equation of the line of best fit. So this bit's always a wee bit messy. We first of all need to do the gradient. So our gradient, we're using a couple of different pieces of information. So let's see if we can kind of find a decent enough point on it. Uh, funny enough, the mark scheme is going for 50, 490. Let's see if that works for us. 50, 490, <laughs> kind of, uh, let's go with that, let's just kind of cheat uh, and use a mark scheme then for that. So 50, 490 is then the points they're going to have. So this is going to be 490 and then 50. And then the other point which we definitely know is going to be on the line is going to be 26, 300. I hope I've explained that okay. So we've picked two points on the graph, this one here and this one here, and we've used y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 to work out our gradient. If you put that into your calculator and reliably on the forward, you get 7.917, and then we're going to substitute that into y equals mx plus c. Y is 7.917x plus c. And the way we're then going to work out the C is to use the point that we know. So it's the point 326. So it's 300 equals 7.917.26 plus C. And again, work out then the C. So this times 26 and taken away from 300 gives you a C value of 94.158. Um, you could vaguely work out, I suppose, where it crosses the y-axis there as well, but I think ours is kind of a more accurate one. Quite often as well in these papers, that's not actually the y-axis, it's just it happens to be zero there. That sort of helps us out. But we are now there, so our final answer then, hopefully you can see everything here. y equals 7.917x plus 94. We'll just go to two decimal places since we have done 94.16. Okay, question three. Paul recorded his golf scores over the course of a year. His results are summarised in the table below. Calculate an estimate of the mean. So to do an estimate of the mean, we generally do this times this, but you obviously can't multiply 65 to 67 by this. We need to find in our midpoint, which we're going to call x. So midpoint then is x. So 65, that's going to be 66. That's going to be 69. 72. 75. 78, 81, and then we do fx. So we times these, four times 66, 264, 12 times 69, 828, 24 times 72 is 1728, 32 times 75, 2400, six times 78, 468, and two times 81, is 162. I assume we'll use this later on maybe for a standard deviation or something. Calculate an estimate of the mean score. So our estimated mean then is sigma 
fx over sigma f. So if we add these up here, we get 5, 8, 5, o. Oh, we add the frequency up, remember we're not adding up the midpoints, add the frequency up. It comes into 80, play golf 80 times. So it's 5, 8, 5, o oh, all over 80. Um, and we get 73.125. Explain why the answer for the mean in part one is only an estimate. Well, he scored between 65 and 67 four times. We don't know what score he got. All we know is it was between 65. So it could have been 65 or 66 or 67. But we've just assumed then it's always 66. So that's why, because we've kind of taken a midpoint. Um, so the midpoint is being used. So it's only an estimate. Calculate an estimate of a standard deviation of the scores. You must show clearly each step if you're working using the table opposite. So we need then to do our fx squared column for that. Now remember, rules of bid mass and all that. We square the x and then we times it by the f. So it's not just this number here squared. It's this here squared and then times by the 4. So it's 1, 7, 4, 2, you can check in your calculator, make sure you can work this out. 5714416. The sum of these, if you add them all up, comes to 428,500. Sorry. And 98. So we're going to use that then for estimate of a standard deviation. So let's go to our formula. It's the square root of the sum of all the fx squared. Of the sum of f. Take away then the mean squared. So in this scenario here, we are going to have that big number. What did I say? It was 428598. all over 80. Take away 73.125, the number we just worked out, squared. You put that in your calculator, find the square root, 3.1952, and rounding that, then we're going for 3.2 to 3 significant figures. Okay, question four then, complete Pascal's triangle in the grid below. So hopefully we know this, it's always flanked down each side then by ones. And then we add the two above, so one plus one is two, one and two is three, two and one is three, one plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four. Hence write down the expansion of P plus Q to the power of four. So we go for P to the power of four, that's a one P to the power of four. And then the powers of P drop as the powers of Q increase. And we put this number out the front, 4p cubed q plus 6p squared q squared plus 4p q cubed plus q to the power of 4. Uh, part 3, Charlotte goes into a room where there are four windows. Each window is either open or closed. The probability the window is open is 0 0.7. Find the probability that exactly 3 are closed. So we're asked to work out if they are closed. I suppose you can do you can put the P or Q whatever way you want really. I'm gonna go for P to be closed. And that's gonna be 0 0.3. And then Q will be open. You can have it the other way around, just be careful maybe you're filling it in. Um, is 0 0.7 and we know then in this case that N is 4. So exactly three are closed. So that's going to be the P cubed part. So the P cubed part is four P cubed Q. Well, we just put the numbers in. Four, not point three cubed. 0.7 and that gives you 
five, six. Find the probability that at least two windows are closed. So what do we have? We have P is closed. So at least two windows closed is going to be this one plus this one and this one. Or if you want, one take away this one plus this one. I feel like it's a bit six of one half a dozen the other because we just kind of work this one out. But I'm going to go for one minus um, these ones here. So it's probability least two closed and that equals one minus the probability of zero plus the probability of one so that's one minus four p q cubed plus q to the power of four one minus Four again. Fill in the blanks. Uh, not point three, isn't it? Not point seven cubed. That's not point seven all the power of four. And again, put that into your calculator and work it out. You get not point three four eight three. Question 5, then throughout the year, Alice took 9 written tests and 5 practical tests in music. The mean mark of her 9 written tests was 69. The mean mark of her 5 practical tests was 83. Calculate the mean mark of all 14 tests. So we're going to work out our total mark. So it's going to be, what all our marks added up to, it's going to be 9 times 69 plus 5 times 83 because if the mean of the nine tests was 69 then all the tests must have added up to nine times that and um, that's how that works so it's one o three six and so the mean then that we're looking for is one o three six divided by how many tests where there are 14 and if you put that in your calculator you will get 74. Um, part Two, the standard deviation of our nine tests was 15.4. The standard deviation of our five practical tests was 7.8. Calculate the standard deviation of all 14 tests. Well, it's all about getting this sigma x squared thing. So our standard deviation formula sigma x squared, maybe we're n minus the mean squared or something like that. So we square both sides then our standard deviation squared is sigma x squared over n minus x bar squared. And we're going to work that out then kind of for both of those, if that makes sense. So for the written tests, it's going to be 15.4 squared, because that was my standard deviation in there, is equal to sigma x squared over 9, take away, and what was the mean? 69 squared. So that means a sigma x squared, and hopefully you can work this out without me kind of showing you. You square that, square that, add it to this side, times 3 by 9. Uh, but for the written test, you get 4, 4, 9, 8, 3.44. And that's my sigma x squared then for the written tests. For the practical tests, I'm just going to do the same thing. Different numbers, so 7.8 squared is equal to sigma x squared all over five, there were five of those tests, and then the mean for that, what was it, 83, I think? 83 squared. So again, do your sums and get the sigma x squared is a terrible sigma. Uh, and for that one, it comes to three, four, seven, four, nine, point two. That means to work out then for both tests, Sigma x squared is equal to 4, 4, 9, 8, 3.44 plus 3, 4, 7, 4, 9, 0.2. And if you add those together, you get 7, 9, 7, 3, 2.
0.64 back then into this standard deviation formula to get their final answer. So standard deviation is the square root of 79732.64 all over. So it was all tests, 14. We've just worked out that our mean, sorry, let's take away and equals obviously. Uh, 74 squared, put that all in your calculator and you get an answer of 14.81. Okay, question six in students at a school uh, we're asked what drinks they drink regularly and we have these three results here. Uh, using the diagram below, find the percentage of students who drink both cola and orange. So seven drink neither, so we can stick our seven out here. That's okay. And then 88 is kind of cola. And then 65 is orange. So they haven't given us that kind of middle bit there. So we're going to call that X and then see if we can suss this out. This, of course, isn't going to be 88. It's going to be 88. Take away X. And then the orange here is then going to be 65. Take away X. Now, obviously, percentages then add to 100, so it's easy enough to work for us to work this out. This plus this plus this plus this equals 100. So, 88 minus x plus x plus 65 minus x plus 7 equals 100. Now, people can just work this out in their head as well if they want. You know, there's no issue there, whatever way you want to do it. Uh, but x is sort of cancel there with minus x. So, 88, 65 on that, and rearrange, you'll get x then equals 60. Um, I assume we need this later on, so I'm actually going to fill this in here. So I'm going to go 60 here, and then that would be 28 here, and then 60 taken from 65, then 5 here, and make sure again that all works. So 60 plus 28 gives me 88, plus the 5 plus the 7 gives me 100, so I think then we're all good. So a percentage then, find the percentage you drink both cola and orange, and my answer then is going to be 60. Uh, find the probability that a student selected at random does not drink orange given that they drink cola. So that's a conditional one. So that's the probability of not orange given that they drink cola. Now I do these, there is a formula for this and feel free to kind of use that as you work. But I just kind of look at it and try and use my common sense. So we we're only dealing with the people who drink cola. So given that they drink cola, what's the problem that what's the probability they don't drink orange? So out of the people that drink cola, that's 88%. The ones that don't have orange then is 28. And that's you. 28 over 88. You can sort of use the formula and see if you can suss it out from there, but that's what we have. 28 over 88. And I think that cancels down into 7 over 22. Two students are selected at random. Find the probability that one of them drinks cola only and the other one drinks orange only, giving your answer to three decimal places. So, probability of one cola only and other orange only. So what are we going to have? Drinking cola only is going to be 28 over 100. Orange only 5 over 100 or the other way around. So it's just kind of that times 2 effectively. So it's 28 over 100 times 5 over 100 plus the same thing again. 5 over 100 times 28 over 100 and that gives you as a decimal, giving your answer to three decimal places, 0 0.028. So that's our answer for that. Okay, finally question seven. Then a teacher recorded the times taken to complete a cross country race by year 12 pupils. The times were normally distributed with a mean of 46 and a standard deviation of 8. Find the probability that people chosen at random took less than 60 minutes to complete the race. Give your answer correct to four decimal places. So this is our normal distribution. So we're going to have our wee curves here. And then we're going to try and find our z value as well. So z equals x minus mu 
all over sigma. Z is 60. Mu is our mean, obviously, so it's 46. And then all over 8. And so that then is 60 take away 46, which is 14 over 8. So that comes out then to be 1.75. So it's less than that. So there is our mean there. And my 1.75 sits here. And so I just simply need to look that up then on my table. So there's 1.7. Then the 1.75 is going to be here, so it's 0 0.9599. And that works out. Uh, part two find the probability that a pupil chosen at random took less than 34 minutes to complete the race. Uh, give your answer correct the four decimal places. So Z equals x minus mu all over sigma. 34 take away 46 all over 8. Again, easy enough sum, it's minus 12 over 8. So it's minus 1.5. So the minus is going to be down here and take less than. So we need to kind of manipulate it manipulate this a wee bit, we're looking for Z value of less than 1.5. So the probability of Z being less than minus 1.5 is the same as one minus the probability of Z being less than 1.5. So how does that work? We're gonna do the 1.5 there, sorry, that's a minus 1.5 here. And this is 1.5 and we're looking for this area here so on our table we're going to look up 1.5 and we're going to subtract it from 1. let's go back to our table 1.5 uh, 1 minus 0.9332 and that gives us 0.0668. Final part then, find the probability of people chosen at random took less than 34 minutes to complete the race. Given that they took less than 60 minutes to complete the race, give your answer correct the four decimal places. So we're just using here um, the information worked out in parts one and part two. So it, it is a conditional probability one again, but again, if you can get your head around what's going on, they're probably less than 25 given that it's less than 60. So that's going to be the probability that is less than 34 and less than 60. This is kind of almost using the formula here. And um, all over the probability is less than 60. So if the time is less than 34 and the time is less than 60, it's just the same as being less than 34. So that's the one answer from above, 0 0.0668. And then the probably less than 60, that was our answer to part one. So that's 0 0.9599. And again, put that under your calculator. This divided by this, and you get 0 0.0696. And that's us finished.